Good morning. In the Matahau tradition, we are late to our own funeral, so forgive me for being late. And maybe that's not a Matahau thing, maybe that's just me. Um, we would have been here earlier, but of course we're late, and I apologize, Auntie Marianne, that we're late. So as we're up there, CD tells us it's open mic, so I was like, oh great, we missed opening prayer. Now she's really gonna get mad because we missed the opening prayer. And so I figured I'd come up and share a few things about my Auntie Marianne. Now for those of you who knew Auntie Marianne, there's only one word or two words that we can associate with Auntie Marianne. That is, first and foremost, karaoke. Second, the Lord. Of course, we know the Lord is always first for her, but karaoke. And so last night, as I was telling stories about Auntie Marianne, and I, you know, I, I was like, I remember she was the first lady to ever own a karaoke machine. And you know, we lived here in Euless uh, at the time, and we were uh, lived with Cini, and, and I didn't know what a karaoke machine was, but Auntie Marianne owned a karaoke machine. And it was the kind, you know, believe it, kids, back in the days, it was a cassette tape. And so it had to be rewinded all the time. If you couldn't, like, just press that button and it automatically went. And so I remember she would call, you know, first Venny, because he's the oldest. Venny, how? How? You, you need to come sing and literally take the mic. And no, I don't want to sing. And, you know, and I would get my kids because they didn't want to sing. So as we're talking about this karaoke and how, you know, went from Benny and you know everybody gets piano lessons, but not Bananas children, they had karaoke lessons. And that was even before you hooked up the TV and we didn't even have the cell phones at the time. So that was real, the struggle was real for me because I had to listen to these kids sing. And so after Benny, it was Sayas, you know, how Saya to sing for like 15 minutes. And then the funny thing is, they had to sing Elvis Presley. Who sang Elvis Presley? You know, but she wanted to make sure these kids sang. And so as time went on, time went on, and then, you know, we all grow up, and then I hear about this Tongan cowboy. And I go, who is Tongan cowboy? Then I find out it's actually Saya. And I go, Oh, you know my aunt's hard work of beating those kids up to sing? It paid off, you know, kind of like piano lessons. It pays off, and you end up being, you know, this professional piano. So then when I heard Saya Benny sing, and I said, all the times that Auntie would beat you guys up, Oxy Alma, the, plant, the seed that she planted was so worth it. Because I call on site on everything. Can you represent the family? I need you to sing Tongue and Cowboy. And so we realized last night, that's how Tongue and Cowboy got, was born, was this karaoke machine that kept rewind, rewind every five seconds to get the toe right, the tune. And keep in mind, my aunt didn't know, didn't have a voice. You know, she was little. So I was like, how is she instructing these kids so when I see the kids now, I'm like, wow, I guess you don't have to really, you know, learn how to know how to see as long as the kids are in tune themselves. And so I was really, really impressed with that as I see now that the kids see, like this says she doesn't see, but that's okay. You know, she's like, yeah, I don't see either, but we have other talents. But I was so, you know, that's one thing that I had seen. Another thing that I had seen too with Auntie Marianne, you know, on the part with the godly side, she was a very humble, humble lady. She barely ever got mad. And um, I remember one time they had this car and it always broke down and she had an interview in Dallas. And Uncle Siona was like, I'm gonna let you use the car. It's pretty far, but don't break it. And she goes, I, I won't. So she packed all of us kids in there. You know, of course I'm older. And so she says, you're gonna stay with the kids. I'm gonna go inside for the interview and I'll be right back. Do not touch the car. And I go, oh, don't worry, I won't, I won't, I won't. And so, you know, I'm like looking around, I'm like, this is a pretty big parking lot. I think I could probably just get away with just driving around. 
Well, I drove around, come to find out the car died out. And so I'm like, oh great, with the kids in here, now I'm gonna get in trouble. So Milana comes out and I'm expecting her to be just like my mom and yell at me and beat me up. And she comes and she goes, how did the car move? I said, I don't know, I was just trying to like park it straight, but it already was. And I said, I don't know. She goes, you moved it. And I said, no, I, I wasn't really like moved it. She goes, no, I know you drove it. So I said, no, I didn't. So she comes in and she starts the car and it couldn't start. I go, what happened? She goes, did you drive this car? I go, no, I didn't. And she says, yes, you did. And that was it. And she says, now I have to call my husband and tell him the car is broken. And I'm thinking, oh, great. You know, Siano looks like he's going to beat me up. You know, he's this big guy and he just looks so mean and I was so scared. And then he came and he knew it was me and, and he didn't really do anything. We eventually got the car fixed. You know, this lady here was a very, very humble, soft-spoken, didn't really yell. And that's one thing that I learned from her was that she was very soft-spoken. What she instilled in the kids to use their voices, she wanted more than anything for them to be able to sing. But most importantly, what she wanted kids was for you guys to have a voice for the Lord. Take this time to think about the seeds that she planted. Take the time to try to plant the seeds in your own family because your mother loved greatly and you kids know that. I want to express my love to you. Children, the best thing that she did leave behind was her legacy, which is her children and her grandchildren. And I want to express my love to you all. And I know that she's, she's going to watch over you guys and just know that she is on the other side karaoke with your dad. That was Presley, music, <laughs> and that she is here to encourage all of you. And if you take a little moment in your life just to be still, I promise you will be able to feel her because the Lord has given us the gift of the Spirit. And our families are forever. And this is my testimony that I leave with you all. Name my son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
Ou... Colegul eu o fac mai în așa fata, să nu fac fai, că asta e cu mare acolo mii. Așa am în mod de acolo mii. Și nu am fac parte, nu are chileia, să nu am o fac eu, și farnau, că am familie, pe focii și am o pun, pe fai că nu. O... Mereu n-a făcut că e Mă duc în urmă la Hatuc, Tony Ploc, că cu multul au lui Sierra Washington, era cu lahe când e închis, și e pe chia. Că o aici e la urmă mai, de la Tony Tom, era la noua vei, cu la urmă mai în of, și e pe hină cu el. Că e... Că mă rea n-a făcut bine la ei. Hiti mai e chiar de cani, Vedi che è fra i nuovi anni, ma non è che fa un po' di anni, e poi non è qui, è che 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 non è Kata kau mula mula be, ni, ni kau ingin nak ni, kata kau faham dia ni jadi, ni kau aku mumet mai, falan lagi, mau kalah tau off, mau tau mana, ni faham kau, ni ni aku kau kau ni faham kau ni, biar dia mai dia ni malolo, angkol tu tunggu ni kau ni. So I just like to say a few words in English, especially to Brianna and Siona's children, grandchildren, grandkids. Your mom, something that uh, I think that you need to treasure and you need to think about things that she believes. She is a testimony for our Savior Jesus Christ. She knew that uh, someday that we will be resurrected again. Uh, I 
grew up in a different faith, and I, uh, I, I joined the church uh, when I was a teenager. And uh, as I uh, think about Mariana, and as I think about my grandfather, Ifoni, and uh, what they have done in Hawaii, and here in the United States, uh, that uh, gives me an opportunity, and, and, uh, and because of that, sacrifice that they have done, uh, I, uh, I felt that I am privileged to enjoy the blessings and fullness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, like there, and Saya, and uh, your siblings, and your, your children, I hope that you, uh, uh, that this is not the end of life. Uh, and this uh, and continuance, and, and, and death is not the end of it. Uh, I have the blessings of working in the temple in Seattle. I have the privilege to be one of the temple thieves there. And a lot of times we uh, see families that have lost their loved ones. Um, when they come to the temple, the house of the Lord, uh, they feel at home. There's a holy place. <laughs> sent you my love, but I hope that you uh, do not forget that. And uh, that's something that you can uh, uh, treasure and uh, stay true to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, uh, I, uh, I know that my aunt here is probably smiling from above, seeing us all uh, gather here in this, in this chapel. And I hope that if you have not uh, you know, made it a commitment in your life, in church, renew your covenants and sacrament, and of course, pay yourself to go to the temple if you have not, and uh, so that you can see your end again. Uh, it's something that uh, I think that we take it for granted as a member of the church, <coughs> but uh, this gospel of Jesus Christ that we, um, that we enjoy the full blessings and give us hope that someday
na wao ipitu wafunuti sente jisiko <coughs> na e eh, ahi ya tawata hako nihe ati goni na unofu wai ayo ke ako eseta mohi ati unga ayo ke mita ngai pia kwa ipe ne kiste si mwe ken pia nofu fe ya ya faego na ferila kome a a a a a ya si ulolo kome e taim kone asi mai tawata hako eni ke ati goni na e Hangi aku yang mau toko uang mau oni, ya kau ini aku, kau mian pengen mau tarat kau milih anak ini fai, fai pe milih anak, aku milih aku ya. Kau tahin ya kau ini, kau tahin ya, kau milih mau oni, kau tahin ya aku kaya, aku kaya ni aku apa apa udah ya me. Kau tahin kau ni aku ya, nai ada bau kau toko uang mau lupa ya kalau uang faau, kau no best friend ya oni. Netalamai yang nak uskan mereka nak bikin lama kuki. Kau yang tahu tak? Kau ini, kau yang pot parikat ambil anak kia kah? Kau ini kau mampu tarat kalau kau kita ni fai. Tiada fai fai pe kau ya. Tiada mama di fakat tak? Kau yang tahu dehina. Maria kasihona, Maria ke sisi tak? Kau harus dia mau kah? Tiada fai mai fononga mui mea. Nama fu bau fi api temu mereka nak mui nafah nak. Kau iloi, kau alwa mereka. Kau apa yang untuk tuh hafal? Kau hok kau tu, nafu mui faham aku ini. Kau ma aku falai, mau hausia, ketik mau tulu, faham aku siona, kau faham aku puna. Tahu kau mai kian, kau opalah ya tu, kau sista in loa. Aini umari nagi pani kuni kolelo mamalang pia molo susana mamalang pa malo la yat kati mo ko mo mai o fuesia ayanga tam no fu ifamili kuni molo ko ifamili kuni ko ifamili o pa u kati kau kau ame agato ame pia ko pa malo at kati mo to pa malo at umhen peni Kau pay area, karena kau awak awak nuku, aku asih ni mau kali kau mau me, aku atau aku mau mau tol kau tol api, ikan kau tol lau hingo, kau malu atau kau mikir, aku hendak kau kau mau si mau, aku dah ini kau mikir, kau kau me ayam kau, kau me ayam mama ni aku me ayam, dia kau yang kau find dia kau harus surprise, amen. Send my condolences to uh, my Aunt and the rest of the children, the grandchildren, the rest of the family. But uh, <clears throat> I don't have a whole lot of memories, uh, like most of you have living here in Texas, but I do have some important memories. Uh, before Madonna became, before Madonna got married and had her own children, we were her children. Uh, my, my father, Ehasi, was older. So when uh, but Emma came from Toma, she uh, stayed in our house, and uh, she was the one that took care of me and my siblings. And uh, between our house and Mama's house, uh, we had the opportunity to uh, <coughs> to uh, share her love. Uh, when Saida called me last week uh, and said that, uh, that she had passed, you know, the only thing I was thinking about is uh, just kind of reminisce of what uh, I remember of her growing up. I always thought she was the best babysitter because we got away with everything. <laughs> you know, uh, we'd never get in trouble. She would always uh, take the blame for things, and that's why that's one thing I remember about her. But uh, one last thing that came to mind uh, last week, we had signed up a couple weeks ago, we had the privilege of, uh, of uh, providing security detail for the princess all week while she was in Salt Lake. So as we were driving her around to a lot of the events that was happening, Saida so get the text as he's driving. 
like, who's that? Well, that's my mom. I'm like, what's your mom? Well, she just uh, reminded me I need to be appropriate for what I say and what I and, uh, and how I dress. And I said, you know, and then the one thing that came to mind was it kind of reminded me that we we sometimes lose now is we become adults in who we are, and uh, some parents forget their role, the most important role in being a parent is, it doesn't end just because your children are adults, just because your children have money or whatnot, whatever their status may be. But as a parent, you continue to teach. And that's what she was doing, is continually and constantly reminding him of his role, not only as a father, but his responsibility to the family. And I thank her for that, because it just kind of reminded me, my role as a father, it doesn't end now that my kids are adults. Whether they do what I ask them, my part of the Father, I will continue to teach. And I thank you, Madam and Anna, for the, for the example and the reminder to me of uh, being a better parent. I love you very much, and I truly miss you. I send my love to her children, the rest of the family, and all of you that are here paying respect at this time. And say this, uh, she'll surely be missed. And I remember the last time I seen her, uh, she was in Salt Lake visiting, she was at the hospital, and I came to visit, she had asked for me and Saya to give her a blessing at the hospital. That's the last time I've seen her, and then she moved on to her daughter's house. But uh, other than that, uh, thank you. And uh, we are better people, uh, better nephews and nieces, better family because of your examples and, uh, and the love and kindness that you've shown us. And uh, with that, I leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> Kaya lot ko feel siya pito. Kaya maari ito ng kung maho. Kaya sa hari manatumeri ng nigya mere ana. Kung mere ana mo ako, kung ulahe pa ay mere ana kasi ako pa ay. Tahiba ono wan ay hawak puta mai ki Amerikan. Pero na lot ko puta mai ki o maya ay hasi. Ke mui mui mai ai ni nga ke ha o toko ni ki ai hono fetu ku mai whamii e whae. Na ke ke toto e whae, ke o mai e ne whamii i te ria na wha a whamii e puta mai. Ka na loto lahi pe puta mai, ke o mai a e has ke ha o toko ni ki ai. Pea koe pinga ia na e ho, ha oa e toe ngai whamii ku i nga koe o mai a e hasi. Ko e hasi mo mere ana, na e hoko pe ia koe ko ngai mau whanau. Na o maha o a mere ana o nofo mautoru, na e hoko pea ko e lahi a. Pea ko loto ke o whaha pe whangi manatu merie e ku manatu i kia mere ana. My mom would always have family home evening every Monday. And mere ana was the only one who had talent in singing. And I remember clearly the words and the song that she sang, and I'm going to sing it to you, just the thing that I remember. <laughs> and, I, and I said to myself, where do you get that song? But don't forget, Mereana just came from Tonga, right? And Tonga, they just probably make up their own words, and, and it goes like this. Saipe, I really like your folk, Yana. Saipe, I like your sweet smile. And I said, what kind of song is that? <laughs> but Marianne, I did not forget. You know, if she was alive or she was like this, oh, that little girl's a little devil. She remembers everything. <laughs> when I moved here to Texas, Marianne says, hey, let's go work for the airlines. So we went to reservation over here at the headquarter. And they had a group um, interview. So me and Marianne was in that interview. And one of their tricky question was, when was the last time you were mad? And when it came to Marianne, Marianne said, I just got mad at my husband and I wanted to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I said for sure, for sure you're not going to make it. <laughs> and guess what? I made it to the interview and she was like the test. <laughs> but she was telling the truth. That's Marianne. <laughs> She never got mad at anybody. And my other memory of Marianne is um, her husband got laid off. And I didn't know that my husband helped them out of our pocket. And so my husband didn't even tell me, and 
Marianne came up to me and said, see, I can't believe you guys would give us so much money like that. And I said, oh yeah? She goes, yeah, thank you for helping us. Instead of saying thank you, she keeps saying over and over, she goes, are you sure you want to give us that much? The more she told me, the more I got madder because I didn't know nothing about it. You know, and Marianne would keep going, are you sure it's okay with you? I was going to say, Marianne, you're making me mad right now because I don't know how much amount and what money did my husband give to you out of our pocket. But anyway, that's Marianne's true color. We went to uh, Salt Lake City and my dad, he has a mean face. I was always scared of my dad. And Marianne and my sister Elis, there's 11 of us, and Elis and my Elis already passed away. So Marianne's going to have a good reunion with Elis. And Elis and Marianne wanted to go hang out at the Temple Square. And so they said, ask Simi, she has a big mouth. Maybe Mapa will let us go. Tell her to go ask if we could go hang out at the uh, Temple Square. So they said, Simi, go ask Dad if we could go hang out and we'll take you with us. And knowing me, I was so scared, I went up to my dad and I said, okay, one, two, three. Mapa, I signed back in, now Mawo, Eva, in Temple Square. And my dad goes, okay, more bed, more night, don't go nowhere. And when it got to us going, Marianne goes, just leave her. <laughs> and so they left me behind and I was crying. Because Marianne didn't want to take me because she knew I will come and tattle on her. <laughs> because she never forget, we went to the laundry mat. And that's how I met Siona. Siona came to the laundry mat, asked Meleana if she were to date. Meliana gave me a candy. She goes, go bed on the phone and don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, when I went home, I said, see, Lolo, there was a guy that came to the party. <laughs> and he looks like he's gone on. <laughs> <laughs> and so ever since that, Marianne knew I was a little tattletale. <laughs> and she never wanted to t tag me along in you know, their lady stuff when they go around. But anyway, Meliana, ofalahi atukako, ifine amale beilahi. I want to tell you how much I love you guys. You guys are very lucky to have a mom like this. I scream all the time. I'm the man of the house. They don't listen to me. They get it. But I, these kids here are very lucky to have a humble mom. And I say his name, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> So we will go from the youngest to the, the oldest. Uh, Jeff and your family, uh, the time is yours. Koki mautoro mo ufi e jermayo o siyo faoshi ki he pekia ka te lak mo pekia mo me amai beki mautoro ko e o se on fulu me on fulu ko ta kone ta fulu.
very righteous mother, despite our behavior. <laughs> I, just, I just think about all the time that we lived like in Hearst and, and Ewan's and man, those people, they're some of the best, they're some of the best uh, memories that I have. Growing up when I first got with my mom and my mom's family, as well as my dad's. But um, I just, there's just so many memories about her. Like, I just remember growing up, I think like I was like three and my mom had sustained an injury at a job and she put her out of work. Fast forward, we were poor. <laughs> <laughs> and I just remember thinking that, you know, back then it was, um, it was kind of embarrassing because they had, um, they had like the paper boot stamps. You know? At least now it's, there's a little more dignity because you got to have the car. You, know? <laughs> you got to slide the car. You know? but, and I remember we lived in third building at Pine Hollow. And we had a Nintendo, so all the kids came over. And um, I don't know which cousin it was, but somebody said to the, you know, they call it boot stamps, like a lot of money. And uh, my cousin says, Jeff, go grab my purse. I was like in third grade. I was like, for what? She was like, you know, so I can give you guys some FS. I am like, mine, but I think he just told everybody in the room because I'm like, he just told everybody in the room. Don't get me wrong, I'm not talking down to you because I want some right now. It's kind of tough. No, it's all jokes aside, man. I love my mom. I kind of felt like I knew it was coming because the past three years, but she went from texting once every two weeks to where it was becoming more frequent, you know. And I'm at, we have a little daughter, and I'm at the age where I'm courting to her right now. So every time my, my um, mother would text me, I would immediately text her back. And then I got to where I just started calling her back. And every time she would text, I would call her, text, I would call her. I was thinking to myself, I don't know when, when, which time is going to be the last time, but it felt like a ticking bomb, and I could just kind of feel it. And so when I found out, I was taking shower, and she was like, hey, can you get on the phone? I was like, I was like dude, I'm not finished yet. She was like, no, it's your sister. You need to talk to her. It's about your mom. Right when she said that, I already knew. And so I was like, dang it, dude. You know, it's, it's never going to be. But, um, yeah, it, you know, no matter what, no matter how bad or anything, I just knew, you know, my mother taught us, she taught us about the gospel and we all chose our own paths. <laughs> you know, I'm not scared for my mom at all. Um, I'm more scared for us. <laughs> but, you know, we're all working our salvation out and doing our best <clears throat> to, you know, be family people now. And I'm just grateful for all the associations that we've had over the years with a lot of you. Uh, grateful for all of my mom's brothers and sisters. And, you know, it's a different experience now because I feel like these past couple weeks I've got to spend time even with my dad's brother and his mom and his wife. And I said, man, I'm grateful that, to, that my uncles and aunts and you guys are like our parents now. So if you see us coming around a little bit more and kind of annoying you, it's just that. Same time. <laughs> but um, 
Yeah, I'm just so grateful to all my uncles and aunts, everyone that was able to come through. And uh, so support for our family, love me up with every time. Auntie Sing, and uh, I'm Auntie Anna, Auntie Anna, I'm all star. You know, I'm always the type to leave names out. My Fijian brother, who I've been hanging out with for like eight years, flew in. And he's actually fed me on mom's side. sisters, all my uh, nieces and nephews and all my cousins and of course our Texas family we're all in Salt Lake now. Hex and Shelly and Vita and all you guys. Um, everybody's blurry to me so the glasses, sunglasses don't come off. Yeah. But <laughs> just wanted to thank you guys and like I said if I leave anybody's name out or any recognition just know that She might have, but I don't remember. But um, she kept my dad's head. She kept my dad good. I think when she gets to heaven, my dad's gonna say, "Why are you sending money to Nigeria?" Everything's <laughs> <laughs> cool. Just kidding. I love my mom. I love your mom. You know, she taught me how to be kind, but it's too kind. And, um, I hope you can help us on the other side because I'm going to need all the help you get. Um, I say these things in Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't mind my husband. If you have a Maria or a Nike, they call my car up to his Lea Ahoy. Now, Dango Koaki, how to find Maria, but my fate will not be there. My key family is easy. I go my husband was talking and I was like, I kind of go back into the memories of when I first met her. Um, first thing that she asked me is like about my testimony and the gospel. And then we just kind of went on to a whole Relief Society <laughs> lesson right there. Uh, she was telling me about all the kids. Uh, and I told my husband, she was telling me all the, they're so foul. Um, one story that my husband always told me is like, one day my mom told me, she's like, Jeff, I found you at the Fale Fall. And he was crying. He's like, Jeff was crying. He's like, you seriously found me at the laundromat? <laughs> and, I, and then a few years later, after we got married, Jeff asked mom, mom, why did you say that? And she was just laughing. He was like, you were so bao. I didn't know how to get you to stop being bao. <laughs> but um, every time she would tell me about all the kids, one thing that I found in common up to this day is despite all the hardship and all the bao that all did, especially the boys, all the boys are mama's boys. <laughs> She was always very helpful. And I always ask myself, are you seriously thinking all of these kids will be making it to that site, you know, after everything? And she talks about Saya, she talks about Remy, she talks about Sila. And she's like, you know, these kids, they do have a testimony. And I love that. I want all the kids to know that. That because of your mom's prayers and her testimony, that's why you're able to come through in life, looking at your kids and your grandkids in your prosperity. I hope you realize and learn that from her. About nine years ago, before Siona passed away, she became my mother, a friend, a mother-in-law. I never looked at her any different. Every time she would come, she like, and. I never looked at her any different, and she treated me as a daughter, and I'm very appreciative of it. This is all the path that we have to go through. Saya was joking about it the other day. He's like, everyone wants to go to heaven, but no one wants to pass away. So 
I wish and hope that all of us, brothers and sisters, we are prepared to go through this path of life because that is the way that we're able to return back to live with our Heavenly Father. I have a very strong testimony of this gospel and I'm grateful for it. Our daughter is not here, but she sent her love and regards to everyone. Um, I hope that we all live as in-laws and as kids and grandkids as a living witness of Mela Anna. Like everyone says, she never lies. Oftentimes she would say things to me and I'm like, no, she didn't just say that. <laughs> <laughs> but like the saying goes, the truth does hurt. You know, I needed to hear that. And I was like, if she looked at me as a daughter, she would say anything that she would say to her kids also. So, I Save the best for last, but um, <laughs> so I can give y'all a heart attack now, and then the boys can just close it down. They're really calm. Okay. Um, I was named after Priscilla Preston, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what, I, I, my dad's funeral. I said. I'm named after two white women. Like, <laughs> <laughs> My mom did things the boss he went to because I really should have been in the hospital so many times for me, Bob. Except for that one time that Jeff Bob was cutting me out of nowhere. <laughs> I put my head back, I was bleeding, I was like, I looked at my dad, and this is the first time he looked at me like, man, you just hurt me this time. take people for granted because you think they're always going to be there, but they're not. And I'll leave my mom gone and she, she's dying. Dead. I guess I am too because I know nobody else is going to talk to me. I'm going to be like, oh, you don't have your mom to take you no more. I'm like, oh, okay, bye. <laughs> Being away from you was gonna give you, you know, less of a heart attack. But maybe I was the heart. I was the favorite, the most loved. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody who helped. Cause I know y'all did a lot. While I just did one little table outside. <laughs> Took me a week.
you guys. Um, thank you, Michael, and everybody else that came from out of town. I uh, just want to say I love y'all. And I love each and every one of you on our safety. I'm going to be a good <coughs>
everybody for being here today. Um, my name is Berthe. I am the middle child of Don and Anna. Um, and I don't like these. I don't like to be put on the spot. I don't like talking in front of nobody. You know, I like to be loud in the corner, loud on the side, but not in front of everybody. Everybody's watching me. But, um, there's a lot to say about my mom. Having her live with me the past seven years has been, we've had our ups and downs. If you know us well, you know my mom is very, very lenient, kind-hearted, always pakakata all the time. And I am so itabade all the time. I take after my dad when it comes to my short temper. So any little thing, that, like when she likes to joke, and I'm not wanting to joke, I just look at her and I'm just like, <gasps> And I have so many stories about her. And she would always tell me when we were growing up, they get you off, and I'll file it. When it came to my attitude, every time she'd turn around, she'd say, oh, you wait. You wait. One of these days, you know, you're going to have a daughter. And you're going to know what it's like every time I file a war, every time I do something wrong. And I was like, that's why I'm not having any kids. And here I am with six. <laughs> and man, do I know exactly what she means. Because I have a daughter named Obi that is my match. And every day I sit there and I follow her and I have to sit there and think. All the warnings and all my cousins would tell me on my mom's side. Oh, so you're not having any, now you know what it's like, what your mom is. Yeah, my mom used to beat me up all the time. If you don't know my mom, when we lived in Pine Hollow, I think I got the vacuum for it all the time. But nobody ever knows that she was like that because it was just me. I was the only one that she would be upset with all the time. But growing up, she, I spent a lot of time at Faye and Ahi's house. Faye and Nadine's house a lot. I was there a lot. And there were times when she would come to the house and <clears throat> say like this. Uh, that he said for you to come home. And I'm like, no, he didn't. And she'd be like, how? Without? And we end up fighting in the driveway. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, I don't want to go home. What is so wrong with me staying here? It's just nothing but girls. She's like, she, he wants you to come home. And I know it wasn't her. I think she just, at him, it was just her. She just wanted me. She missed me. She wanted me to come home. Wanted me to spend time with Sila. But I'm like, man, that, that she's like, still in diapers, and I'm over here and it's a teenager. And she's like, I had Sila for you. You know, I want you to have a sister. And I was like, man, you had her when I was almost a teenager. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> she was like, but I had her for you, we thought. And I was like, okay. But my mom was another memory of her growing up. Everybody knows that when we came home from school, we always, no matter what it was, we always had a cooked meal <laughs> waiting. And, and it, like I said, no matter what it was, and whatever we had in the freezer. But you know when you're little, but we, when I think about it now, it's like, man, I never, I cannot. You guys, it's not even a, it's not even a, everybody knows you didn't know how to cook. Everybody knows my my mom did not know how to cook. It's not it's a it's a running joke, but anything she found that was in <laughs> that was in the freezer, in the cabinet, whatever we had, you know, we grew up poor, you know, so whatever we had is whatever was in the refrigerator, whatever's in the cupboard, expired or not, she threw it in the pot. <laughs> and we came oh, home. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows. That it's not a real joke. All of my first cousins, everybody on my mom's side, everybody knew. Everybody had a home cooked hot meal when they came home from school, no matter what it was. So I used to be, she would have me in the kitchen when I'm older now. And she'd be like, oh, that's, that's not how you do it. And I'm like, no, you did it. And I know you ain't trying to tell me how to, how to cook. But I appreciate, when I think about all the memories back then, I am very grateful. The very little that we had, 
she always found a way to make do. And I never learned how to appreciate that. And now that she's gone, it's, it took me like two days after she passed. <laughs> and stared at the wall. Like, is this, is this really it? All the fights we've had, all the arguments, disagreements we've had, is this it? And I have so much regret not appreciating her more. I mean, I love my mom with everything, with everything I have. There's just always that little voice in the back of your mind that's always like, man, I should have did this better. I could have did this better. I could have been a better daughter. I could have been less angry. But she was like, like this. I, I can call you my Asila. I'm like, mm -mm. no. <laughs> I don't know how many times we have to have this conversation. I, you guys know me and see like bump heads big time, and I don't know how many times I kicked her out. <laughs> my mom would be like, I can fucking my asylum. <coughs> Whatever, no. She came to Texas, went to Salt Lake, went here, and see like always came back. And then this last time, I was past couple months, she was like, like this, please. And I knew. Now that I look back, I think she knew. And she just worried about Sila a lot. And I remember the last few times she passed me, and I said, Mom, if you ask me one more time, you're gonna go live with Sila. <laughs> almost 45 years old. My oldest kid is not 31. Sila is not my kid. <laughs> no matter anything we did or anything we went through, she never saw the flaws in any of us. She always wanted us to do better. She always wanted us to make sure, no matter what, we love one another. I know it's gonna be hard because now my kids are like, man, mom, I wish I would've listened to her more. I wish I, I mean, everybody has their regrets, but now we're gonna miss her walking up and down the hallway looking in the cabinet, closing the refrigerator, open the refrigerator, close the cabinet, open the, <laughs> the microwave, close the microwave. <laughs> but towards the end, she, this lady, all she cared about was her food. She'd be like, like this. Oh my God, that my little pork belly. And I'm like, no, you can't even eat that. She's like, I don't care. It's like, she knew I, could, I would never get her what she wanted, and if I felt like it was, not good for her to eat. I wouldn't go get it. But then here comes Henry with Church's chicken or uh, Kentucky. She's like, I just told Henry, oh, Henry brought it. She knew anything she asked Henry to go do, Henry would always go get it. Or, and I'd get mad and yell and be upset. But I just, I'm grateful that he was at least able to give her what she wanted to eat towards the end and not worry. She would always want, like, the ISA, what do you want from the store when you're a mom I bring home? Um, can you get me a number one uh, for McDonald's and a filet of fish? And then can you stop at Quick Trip and get me, like, the 10, you know, the cakes, <coughs> the individual cakes? Get me 10 of them, so whenever I just want it, I would just go eat it. And I'm like, 10 cakes? <laughs> and I was like, did you I just eat one a day? No, that's a lot. I already know. Every time she wants to go to the kitchen, she'll probably look for one. <coughs> 
But anyway, I just wanted to express my love to each and every one of you. I'd like to thank my siblings and their Hawaiians for everything that they've done for our family and our, my mom. Um, express my love to my kids. Grandma Tom, Valora, my youngest year, that's my that was my mom's point of air. Every time she woke up, she always asked for Valora, but Valora was at her other grandma's house all the time. She's like, why do you always, why can't I have her for some time? I'm like, well, can't really take care of her. She's a little bit younger than everybody else, but i like to thank each and every one of you, express my love to you, and i like to see you in the next For those of you who don't know me, my name is Henry White. Uh, I'm like this roommate, and uh, these are all my kids. <laughs> but Anna was, she was nice. She was, when we first met 20 plus years ago when, when we got married, I mean like that, she was the nicest lady I ever met. Until we got into our first fight, I was like, wow, this lady. She was jumping on my back and then <laughs> I said, who is this? Oh, I'd like to get your mom. <laughs> but no, seriously, she was she really was. She was she was the she was the nicest all the time. She always had the nicest demeanor every morning. Yeah, every morning I would take the kids to school and she would text me, can you bring me a donut? Whatever you want. Can you bring me two? Whatever you want. <laughs> Just don't tell like that, okay? You'll be fine. As long as you don't tell like that, I'll bring you whatever you want. She goes, okay, then go McDonald's too? Oh, no, I can't do that. McDonald's too far. But yeah, no, she was, she always loved my kids. She always loved all my family. And my family loved her too. You know, for all my family that, that met her uh, when she was in Missouri and knew her, they all loved her. They loved the way she, she was with them. I mean, she was honest. She always spoke her mind. Sometimes you kind of didn't want to hear it, but sometimes you needed to hear it. I mean, I needed to hear it a lot. Uh, I hadn't been the best most of the time, but she would always let me know when I, when I was doing good. I just, uh, I'm gonna miss her. She was always, she was always the good spirit that, that we needed in our house. Now that she's gone, I hope we can try to find that good spirit that she brought to our home. I don't know, we're gonna miss you. We love you. Thank you guys all for everything that you guys have done. I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. <coughs> I'm not Oli, um, that's the other daughter. Um, um, these, these past couple of years living with my grandma have been a time to say the least. Um, she was um, she was always, um, she was like our, our number one supporter when it came to anything. 
she was our alarm clock, she was our, 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 our uh, gourmet chef, if um, <laughs> there was anything left in the cabinets. Um, um, she was, she was always um, uh, a shoulder for me to, to lean on whenever um, I felt that, that the load I was carrying was too strong. As the oldest, um, as the oldest kid and the oldest daughter, I was, um, went to her and talked to her for a pick-me-up. Granted, it always ended up in her asking me to go get her food, but it was okay. She was, she was lended a, um, a listening ear, and um, 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 I stand up here before you guys on behalf of me and the rest of my siblings, and I just wanted to say. Um, thank you to each and every one of you who helped. Or thank you for just being here. Um, just thank you for loving my grandma the way she needed to be loved, especially after um, my grandpa passed. After um, after that, she needed all the love and support she could get. Um, and um, yeah, I just want to say thank you all so much, and I love you all so much. Um, I'm gonna miss you, Grandma. I'm gonna miss um, you asking me to take you to Burger King after dialysis. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you asking me for a number one with the large Sprite. Um, I'm gonna miss karaoke in the living room. Um, I'm gonna miss the sound of your slippers in the hallway. Even if, what, even if it was in the middle of the night when you were walking to the kitchen, I knew it was always you. Um, I'm gonna miss you. And I love you. And I love all of you too. And uh, I say these things in Jesus Christ, amen. I have two favorite memories with Meliana. Uh, one of them is when Saya and I were dating. Um, one time I was on Facebook and Meliana had commented on Saya's picture. And she said, son, you need to start drinking lemon water. Your face is kind of fat. <laughs> and when I read that, I was like, this is the kind of mother-in-law I want. Because me and her can both come on her side. Um, the second favorite memory I have of her 
we would come to Texas and she would be here and she would have dialysis and me and Sai would go and pick her up. And uh, Sai was so excited to, to surprise her. So she gets in the truck and uh, she always sit, sat behind us. She never liked to sit in the front. And she got in the truck and she said, and so I was like, hi, mom. And she's like, Sia, you need to look like a Mormon. And so I already knew so I was starting to get mad. And I'm just sitting there like, yes, keep going. And she's like, Sia, you need to cut your hair, you need to shave, you need to do this. And so they go back and forth all the whole 30 minutes all the way home. And so that's one thing I really loved about this woman. Um, she was a great mom. Um, she needed, to, she always told you what you needed to hear. She never told you what you wanted to hear. It was always the blunt truth. And that's what a mother's love is. She always wants the best for you. So, Meliana, thank you for everything you've done for us, our little family. Um, every time she would call, Sia would have her on speaker and if she heard me in the back, she would, hi, Lelou, say, hi, mom. And she would always say, Lelou, my lord, see, off I find out what's She said it every single time, and Saya would say, mom, why do you always have to bring that up? And Melia and I would say, go ya, bel, see, hella, ia, Lelou, find out. So, I will always miss this lady. She's, she always had my back. She loved me like a daughter. Um, and uh, we don't have two of our kids here, but four of them are here. But I just want to express my love to you, Mom. I'm so happy for you because I know exactly where you're at. Rest peacefully. Of Allah, you have to go ahead and my love. Sing. 
And she only wanted to sing that song and I hated that song. I mean, I used to love it. But got to the point where I hated that song. Because then I see my dad singing it, then I get jealous because I think she liked my dad more than me. <laughs> and that's how everyone knew them, is singing at all the functions or I mean, even sometimes that old walk up. That's what she loved. She loved eating and karaoke. I think that's why I take after her. I'm happy today. When I heard, when, when, we, when we came down here for Alcia's birthday, uh, when we landed and we got to the hotel, I was ready to go to sleep and I got the phone call. And all I heard was like screaming on the phone. Said mom passed. <clears throat> Immediately, I was gonna get mad. I was like, who did it? What hospital was it? Who's the doctor? Who's gonna kill it? <laughs> and then I said, don't say nothing. We came here for our uncle's birthday, and we're that's what we're gonna do. Nobody say nothing, nobody tell nobody, and all of a sudden I heard someone posted it. <laughs> but she don't post it before I tell you to shut <laughs> I could have been mad because whatever the, the, the reason was that happened, it was supposed to happen. My mom told me that. She told me that one day this will happen. There's nothing we can do about it. That's the plan. Even my dad's funeral, she begged me to sing the Elvis Presley song. And I was so upset that I sang it anyway, angry. <laughs> and we had a birthday, we had a surprise birthday party for her. And the only thing she remembered was, how come you didn't sing my song? <laughs> or how come you didn't let me sing the song? My mom was a, it was a surprise, last minute surprise. All the requests, that's all she ever wanted, <clears throat> was for us to go back to church and sing Elvis Presley songs. <laughs> I remember three years ago, I was living in Montana. I had just received my priesthood. A week later, Jeff called me told me, I think mom's gonna pass. You better come down. She's in Salt Lake. She came to visit. Now she's in ICU. If you wanna see her, come. you gotta come down. Right then, I remembered. Maybe that's why 40 years later, I finally got my priesthood for this moment right here. I flew to Utah. Me and another walked in the room. My mom was crouched up in the bed. And I was like, man, I'm too late. She's gone. Big old bed and she's crouched up. She looked like she was gone. And I remember I walked up to the bed and I put my hand on her. And I said, mom, I'm gonna give you a blessing. She said, what? <laughs> She almost said, don't touch me. <laughs> she, sat, she sat up in the bed and said, what? What do you mean? I go, mom, I'm a priesthood. She goes, no, 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 let me see the paper. <laughs> let me see the paper. Said, really? I said, I just got my priesthood last week, and I think it was for this moment. She looked at me as a look I've never seen in her face. A feeling that I never deny ever again. We laid our hands upon her and I felt like the room was floating. And I swear to you, my mom didn't go to the hospital. She wasn't sick until the day she passed. She told me two weeks, three weeks ago, you know I never had a dream about your dad. I 
Saturday, she told me that my, her, my grandpa, she saw my grandpa. And I know the Tom is superstition. I know I told the story, whatever. But she told me that I kind of knew. She said she hasn't dreamt about her dad in a long time. But she was happy that my grandpa came to see her. Like I said, my, my mom's been ready to go. I've always done what my mom told me to do. And I'm not crying today because she's gone. I'm crying because all the faces in here, everyone in here I grew up with, everyone here I learned from, everyone here that, that loved my mom, everyone has a story about her. And I wish we had time for everyone to come up here and share that story. <clears throat> when I see my little nephew, and I leave, and I'm always excited to see him. Everyone tells me he looks like me. I say, yeah, so that means I'm gonna make you act like me. <laughs> and he told me, I go, what is your best memory of grandma? Uh, one time my dad told me to go ask grandma what she wanted to eat, and grandma said, I want two supreme tacos. And then 20 minutes, this is exactly what he said. And then 20 minutes later she goes, Henry, I mean, I want three supreme tacos. Mm -hmm. All right, but Henry Lee was over there walking around, and then uh, Henry went got the order, came back, and he said, "You know, Grandma said it, but what?" She said, "Henry Lee, if I don't get my three supreme tacos, I'm gonna slap you." <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he's a little kid. Man, that's fucking awful. <laughs> you know, my mom was all about her food. <laughs> I used to get mad when my mom asked me to sing this song. I never wanted to sing it. But it was her favorite thing in the world. And I hope I can make it through this song. I'm going to sing it for her. Willingly.
from the Bible. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through, 14, 13 through 14 states, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep. She was always there for me. She's the face that comes to mind when talking about early childhood memories. She's one of the many woman figures that helped me mold me into who I am today. Just wanted to share a few memories that I, my favorite memories with her. Um, uh, every time I see her, She'd always tell me that she wants me to be a nurse. And I'm like, why do you want me to be a nurse? She always says that every time I see her. She was so adamant on having me be a nurse. And I was like, okay, Grandma, I will. But that didn't happen. Um, her love for Quick Trip Cakes was unbelievable, like Auntie Lita said. Um, I took her to dialysis a few times uh, earlier this year. And, um, she always says, every time I picked her up, she was always like, so what are we gonna eat? I go, uh, what do you mean? She goes, uh, well, I'm, I'm hungry. I go, well, what do you want? It's either Burger King or Little Caesars. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, Essa stated her <laughs> go-to uh, go choice, the number one. Um, she was so picky because she didn't want the fries, and I was like, oh, you know, I don't know. But we would get it, and then, we go to Quick Trip. She said, can we stop at, stop at Quick Trip to get my case? I always shook my head. I was like, okay, Grandma, whatever you want. I, I'm just surprised she didn't tell me to grab all three boxes <laughs> that were lined up next to each other. I just grabbed one, one for her and one for me. Um, she had funny comments about when me and Esther were younger. She always make fun of our weight. Always called me Fetty One and Fetty Two, and then Sila was the big Fetty. And they called us the Fetty Triplets. Man, it was trauma. I was so sad. Why is this funny to you? It's not funny to me. But now it's funny now. <laughs> um, younger, like older memories. Tiny Bubbles was our song, and she taught me a dance to it, but I don't know if I remember it. Um, karaoke, if you guys probably heard that this whole time during the service, <clears throat> karaoke was a top priority for her, top <coughs> hobby. Um, she's the reason why Grease is one of my favorite movies. Um, I always watch it here and now and then, always remember her. Um, it's her and Papa Siona's fault that I'm big because we always used to go to Chinese buffets when I was little, and now I'm addicted. <laughs> it's always, every time my dad asks me, like, where you guys want to go eat? It's always a Chinese buffet. My siblings hate that. And I'm like, oh, well, sorry, I'm the oldest now. <laughs> um, 
Every time I go see her when we go to Auntie Letha's for the weekend, um, every time I go in her room to go say hi, she's always watching reruns of American Idol and X Factor or America's Got Talent. And I'm like, Grandma, didn't I see you watch this last time I saw you? But I mean, she's so obsessed with those. Um, this is probably not funny to y'all, but it's funny to his grandchildren. I don't know why she can't pronounce her R's, but she always, every time she's eating, she always say, uh, Wana, go get my blink. My blink. I said, Wana, what's that? She goes, my blink. And then she pointed to the water. I was like, oh, your drink. Uh, okay. So now me and, this, me and the grandchildren always say, blink. And we always laugh because it reminds us, reminds us of her. Um, she... Whenever we went over there, she cooked for us sometimes. It was mostly saimini. Uh, we had that with uh, ground beef, and that was like the bomb diggity. <laughs> but then one time she put frozen veggies, and I looked and I was like, what is this? Like, this is not what we had last time. And I told dad, he said, man, she's just freestyling in the kitchen. She always do that. I'm like, you don't do that with me. <laughs> and then my last favorite one was, me and Esta doing TikToks in her hospital room. Uh, she was in bed, and me and Esther would just set up the camera facing her, and we're on the, each side of the bed, and she's watching her shows, and I'll play it loud, for, like, on purpose. She's like, hey, turn that off. It's too loud, I can't watch my show. I'm like, chill out, Grandma. And then she, just, she was just constantly telling us to turn it off, and I would laugh because she looked really irritated and annoyed with us, and so we did it, and then we just turned it off, and then we'd laugh about it. Um, these are things I'm going to miss about my grandma. Even though I didn't live with her, I always felt her spirit with me. I know that she's in a better place with our Heavenly Father. She's not hurting anymore. I just hope we get to meet soon. And that I love you. And I know you're dancing with Papa Soda right now. And watching over us. And, uh, I love you guys. And I thank you for the support for Grandma's memorial. And uh, see these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Unconditional love. <clears throat> Something my mom had dealing with me as the oldest. Um, my time is short, so I'm gonna keep this short and simple. Um, <clears throat> unconditional love. An example of that is uh, in my teens. I went on a long vacation, six years long, um, where the unconditional love part comes in is we were poor, we didn't have anything. When it came time to pay the bills, my dad would give my mom the money to go pay whatever bill he needed her to pay. She would go get a money order go to the post office and send it to me. <coughs> now the lights are off. <laughs> but she had to deal with it because I was in there. My mom did this. Every now and then she would do this. <coughs> you give him the money to go pay a bill she'll send it to me. She felt sorry for me, even though it was my own doing. 
my dad would tell them, would tell her to tell me, why don't you tell your friends? Just say you want to do. Think you want to be a bad actor. I appreciated my mom for that love that she had. Um, I'm not a very good public speaker, so please forgive me. I imagine my dad being happy when they first see each other in heaven. I picture my mom saying something like, Oh, you did make it up here. <laughs> That's just a humor. You know? So say that. But, uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out and showing all the love and support. Uh, everybody took the time. So I just wanted to keep that short and simple. And I just want to express my love to all of you. Malvasia, Anna, thank you. Um, I love you guys very much. Say anything.
the Las Vegas home. When my night was my way down my way to the house. Oh, oh, oh. 
הרבה מוהג פרעה שנקרא הוא פרוגרמה מטורפה אמינית, לכאורה זה היה לך דאולוג, פרוגרמה בוני יכול לומר עייף, עייף על אותו, הוא לא מבטוח, שפרעה שמוע את ההוא, פרוגרמה כל מיני כתב, כמו מעט כי בלילות, כלומר בו בו נאו את האומה ‫שפעמי. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. I was like, Dallas, get this car. <laughs>